Hey everyone, Chase here. <clears throat> Today we are starting a new series and it is called Road to Pro. Many of you are going to be watching this trying to figure out how to become a much better foosball player. As you can see in the past on my old videos, I have made many trick shot videos, but I haven't done any tutorials. Today is going to be the beginning of that. So step one is how do you become a better player? Um, this episode isn't going to be about shots or passes. It's going to be about general ball control tips and tricks of how to work on ball control. That is probably the most important part of becoming a better foosball player. If you've ever been in a bar or at a tournament and you go, I have this great shot, I have this great pass, but this guy just beats me all over the table, well, it's because he has better ball control than you. It's hard to notice. It's one of those things that when you're playing, you don't always even feel it. But when you go back and you review videotape of yourself playing or anything like that, you realize, wow, this guy's got some incredible ball control. So that's what we're going to go over today some just general tips and tricks and your step one and the very first step in becoming a pro foosball player. Alright, so the first step <clears throat> as I was saying is ball control. It's a very simple concept but a lot of people overlook it especially when they're first learning to play the game. You know, tic tacking the ball across the guys is great. It's very good practice but it's not the only thing. Also, doing stuff like this is actually great ball control too, but it's not the true basis of what you need to be learning to very, very start. What you need to be working on is something much simpler. To start off, have the, guy, the ball pinned underneath the very first guy on your five bar. Walk it all the way over to where you can get to the second guy. Now repeat, all the way down. Now, it seems rudimentary. It seems like, oh, well, I could do that in my sleep. Well, the thing is, when you get really good at this type of thing, you have much better ball control. You'll be able to move the ball around, front and back, and be able to pass and do things on the table that you're going to need to do. Now, why is this important? Well, say the ball's flying around the table and you're in a match. All of a sudden, you're able to grab the ball on the fly. You know exactly where the ball is going. You can pin it from either direction. And you'll be able to move the ball much better knowing where it is. Now, you're going to want to do that on essentially these three rods and even the goalie rod. The reason for it, again, is just general ball control. You need to be able to do all of the things on the table that you're going to be required to do in a match. Now, <clears throat> once you do it in the back pin, you're going to want to also do it in the front pin. pretty basic. But this type of movement will later help you even with your just basic brush pass. Now also a good concept of this after you're doing it on the on even the three rod say you go and you hit a pass far too hard. You can then swing around to try and catch the ball when it's coming back to also pin it. So say the ball, you hit the ball too hard on the five when you're making a pass. It hits this guy and starts going backwards. You can then immediately jump around and pin the ball to complete the actual catch. Same goes, again, if the ball's flying around and it's coming off things, bouncing around. You can then grab it as it's coming back to you. Just basic concepts to try and get you better at the game. Now you are going to want to practice tic-tacking as well, all around the table through all the guys. I should probably 
to give him a call. But again, to start off, just simple pinning. Later on, especially up, up here, you'll be able to do all sorts of things because you have that practice. Now when it comes to the goalie rods, <clears throat> it's going to be a little bit different um, because these guys overlap dramatically more. So for example, this guy can come all the way to down here past the ball and inversely him. So you have to practice walking both directions, overlapping and bringing it back and forth. Because just knowing where this stops here and only ever pinning the ball to here doesn't necessarily mean that you won't need to be able to pin the ball this way as well. So you're going to want to be able to walk it all the way down, walk it all the way back, and then same with this, all the way over and all the way down. Then in the back pin, all the way down and all the way back. In goalie, it's not as important because you're going to be practicing on a much harder rod, which is your five, and the rods don't overlap as well in the goalie position, so you're going to find it a little bit more difficult. But for this part of it, with your back guy, with the center goalie guy, this is actually going to be more important than you can imagine. This allows you to grasp where the ball can be and where you can block it. So say the ball's flying around again on the table, somebody just shot it, and it's coming towards your goal. You'll know right where you can pin it. Stop it from going in. It's pretty important. Now this one to me, this little practice part that I'm about to show you, is actually maybe one of the most important if you're playing just goalie. Looks simple. It is, but it has to do with setting up the ball. So if you shoot a pull shot, if you shoot a push shot, that basic movement is how you set up the ball quickly so that you can then take that shot. Set, and we're ready to go. Same down here, and you're ready to shoot. Now, <clears throat> in tournament play, this is exceptionally special, because as you guys know, 15 seconds, 10 seconds, 15 seconds in the goalie area. When the ball's flying around and you finally grab it, that's pretty much when your first 15 seconds begins. But setting the ball up back here quickly gives you even more time to sit and view the defense that you have to shoot on. <clears throat> Again, just basic stuff. But when it comes to this and setting it up, you're going to want to catch as the ball is coming back to you with the guy. If you've ever seen the Mighty Ducks, this is their egg test. The egg passing drill. Same idea, but you can be significantly more difficult with it than an actual egg. Now you're going to want to do this all the way down. Same idea, just keep doing it back and forth. Now, <clears throat> once you've done this a bunch of times, and I'm, I do mean a, a fair amount, this is not something to take lightly. Um, even I do these practice drills still to this day. Uh, I don't compete as much as I used to. I'm going to get back out there again this year, hopefully 2017. But those drills, those little minor drills, are going to make you significantly better player in bars, at your local DYP, your local tournaments, even the state and professional major level. Um, <clears throat> that would be the very basis, and that's going to allow you to build the game that you need to start beating these higher level players. 
one more thing what we just did here also works great between the five and the three this gets great practice for catching the ball in transition in movement in passing everything just these basic drills So that's going to end episode one. Some very basic tricks and tips to just start to become a better foosball player. They again, they seem very easy, they seem very basic, but the more you do those drills, the better your ball control becomes, the better player you're going to be. Ball control is going to be the number one thing in foosball that can determine the best player. If you see some of the greatest players out there, I mean the greats of the greats, the Tonys, the Todds, the Fredericks, the Billies, all of those guys, <clears throat> they're the ones that have the best ball control. That is what you're trying to get to, that type of ability of ball control. That's going to be the number one thing that takes you from here, if you can even see my hand, to here. <clears throat> Again, thank you guys so much for watching the video. Please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you like this video. If not, don't do anything. It's probably better that way. Um, I'm going to be taking recommendations in the comments section below. So if you have a tutorial that you specifically want to see, I'm more than happy to doing it for you. Uh, I have a series set up here. We're going to go through a whole bunch of different shots and different series, thought processes, defense, all of those things. So please let me know what you think. And until next time, happy foozing.